Hey guys, Frank here, and this is my workshop. Had a lot of comments on the Cub Cadet custom motor grader that I built last year. So, uh, and some questions about how it was put together and, and how it works. So I thought I would uh, spend a few minutes walking you guys through its construction, the components of it, uh, how I put it together and um, how the controls work. So here's a quick overview of the Cub Cadet motor grader that I built last year. Um, it's approximately 13 feet long. It weighs uh, about 2,000 pounds. It's powered by a 12 horsepower Cub Cadet K301 Kohler um, engine and uses two axles taken from a pair of uh, Cub Cadets wide frame cup cadets from the mid 70s a one model 149 and a model 109 the seats is standard cup cadet seat the frame is the original cup cadet frame extended by about three feet to allow for the second axle behind the first axle and uh, the dash is retained the dash tower and dash is retained from the cup cadet and from that point forward, it's all been custom fabricated. The um, wheel, um, wheel wells or footsteps here are custom fabricated. The Cup Cadet's original frame has been modified. Additional height has been added with uh, two by four rectangular structural tubing and that allows the engine to be mounted above the axles instead of in line with the axles as it would normally be mounted and the front hood and grill assembly from the Cub Cadet as you can see is turned around and mounted here as you might see on a motor grader. The motor grader at this point does does have a tow bar uh, tow point um, behind it and you can see that uh, it's the standard Cub Cadet engine mounted above the rear axles. There are quite a few questions uh, about the drivetrain and how the drive lines worked up. Oh look at this here's Butchie. Butchie come here how you doing? Where's your brother? Where's Brew Brew? Here, Boo Boo. Here's our two boys. There's our Boo Boo. Boo Boo's a good boy. Aren't you a good puppy? Yeah, you're my good boy. Butchie's a good boy. These are my two buddies. All right, back to the back to the grader. All right. So questions about the drive line. So uh, both axles are hydrostatic rear ends out of Cub Cadets. So forward axle you can see the hydrostat let me see if we get a light on it down here so this is the hydrostat here drives the transaxle which has a differential uh, there's a drive shaft which runs underneath the battery connects the rear side of this hydrostat to the front of the second hydrostat and there's a double belt pulley here uh, that then has two belts which run up to the pulley on the engine so there's a double belt pulley on the engine and it's tensioned by this adjustable tensioner here um, right now I'm using a bolt to adjust the tension plan is to actually um, build a, a lever which would um, sit down here in the space between the battery and the frame and it would allow me to tension the belt with just a flip of a lever so that's a the next thing on my list of things to do so that's how power is transmitted you know, from the motor down to the common drive shaft which connects the the two axles together if you're familiar with Cub Cadet hydrostat hydrostats and hydrostatic transmissions 
you realize that there is a um, trunnion which um, actuates the forward and reverse motion, actuates the swash plate within the hydrostat, and uh, in order to sync the two axles, a connecting rod runs from the forward swash plate to the swash plate on the rear hydrostat, and that uh, connecting rod is length adjustable, so you can jack the axles off the ground and adjust the length of that so that the two hydrostats operate in sync. They don't have to be perfect. I found in a previous um, project I built a uh, tandem axle dump trailer or dump tractor that uh, the two axles don't have to be exactly synchronized. Um, as long as they're close, they'll work, they'll work fine. And if one slips, the other one you know, picks, up, picks up the load. The dash assembly is retained from the Cub Cadet. The only exception being uh, power steering has been added from a later model Cub Cadet. And spool valves have been mounted on either side of the dash to control the hydraulic functions uh, of the blade. There's a total of five valves or spools as they're called. Uh, a pair of spools on this side control the blade up and down, right and left. The two spools over here, uh, one controls the blade skew and the other controls the blade rotation. And then the fifth spool is actuated by this lever. It uh, controls the uh, locking pin which locks the blade circle in position to relieve pressure from the gear uh, driven blade circle. Uh, so hydraulic fluid comes from the charge pump in this side, um, goes across, comes out the other side, goes to the other valve, comes out of there, goes through the fifth spool valve under the dash, and then returns back to the, to the charge pump. So all three, all five spools are plumbed in series, which is uh, the way they should be plumbed for proper operation. The power steering um, valve is plumbed in parallel with the other ones. Um, could, be, could have been plumbed in series. For me, it was easier, and it works either way. Controls on the dash are pretty typical of a Cub Cadet. We have a throttle, we have a choke, a uh, charging meter, the, the speed control forward and reverse, and um, ignition switch, and down here there is a um, light switch. So by pulling this on a cooling fan comes on which cools the transmissions. We have headlights here and headlights up front. And at the rear these headlights can be turned white or red so I'll hit this other switch here. If we're going forward then these lights will be red, which would be as you would be normally grading. And if you're backing up, you can hit the switch and these lights turn white so you can see um, where you're going. All right, going forward, let's talk about the traction frame. So uh, terminology for a, a motor grader, and I'm not by any means an expert. I've never operated one, never owned one. Um, but uh, based on my research, there are, uh, the terminology is the, the main frame is the large steel rectangular tube, which connects the uh, rear drive train to the front axle and then suspended beneath the main frame is what's called the traction frame. And here the traction frame is a triangular assembly. It's mounted to the front axle with a 
uh, one and seven eighths inch ball hitch, which is then um, bolted to the traction frame. The traction frame is controlled by three, positioned by three hydraulic cylinders. You have um, two hydraulic cylinders, one on the right and one on the left, which control the blade height on either side. And then there's a third cylinder here, which controls the blade position right and left. It skews the, skews the frame off to the right or pulls it over to the left. There are two other hydraulic functions on the uh, traction frame. One of them is the hydraulic motor here. One of them is the hydraulic motor here, which controls the position of the blade, the angle of the blade through a gear drive. The gear drives this large circular gear. You can see it's the so-called blade circle. And you also notice in the circle there are a number of holes drilled through the circle, through the upper plate, the circle, and the lower plate. And that allows a pin to be driven down to lock the blade circle so that stresses on the blade are not transmitted back through the gear teeth to the hydraulic motor. If I walk around here, maybe we can get a view of the cylinder here that's used to um, lock the So here's a close-up view of the locking pin where it goes through the blade circle and the pin is controlled hydraulically and moves up and down. Let's talk just a minute about some of the construction details here. There are, for each of the cylinders, there are several points uh, of connection. One to the traction frame down here and the second one up here to the main frame. So the connection between those two, each connection point has to have three degrees of freedom. So there's a bearing inside this trunnion here which allows the whole assembly to pivot right, uh, forward and backwards. The pin through the collar which supports the cylinder can rotate and then the shaft within the cylinder can rotate as well. So it gives you three degrees of freedom um, off the main frame. Down on the traction frame this connection point can rotate, is mounted on a bearing. The pin will allow rotation and again the shaft within the cylinder allows rotation as well. So there's three degrees of freedom in this connection point. Same with this point here and the other end of the skew cylinder. <clears throat> Laid here, there is a three inch diameter post which is welded to a bracket bolted to the blade and that three inch diameter post comes up through the center and is um, mounted through several layers through the blade circle, through the lower frame, the upper frame, and the traction frame, and is held by a castle nut here on top. So that's how the blade is actually held to the frame. It's removable. You can drop the blade by undoing the castle nut, lifting the traction frame, and um, the blade will come, come right out. All right, up front on the, the front end, it's a Cub Cadet tractor axle. Um, you can see the power steering hoses. The power steering was taken off of a um, later model Cub Cadet. And uh, the Cub Cadet front spindles were modified uh, and trailer, um, five lug trailer spindles um, were installed and the wheels, normally rear wheels from a Cub Cadet, you can see are mounted here 
on the front. And all three pair of, of wheels have um, Cub Cadet wheel weights. I want to talk just a minute about uh, fabrication of the main frame. So the main frame is made out of four by six inch, uh, quarter inch wall uh, structural tubing, steel tubing, and uh, the joints are all mitered, welded, and um, the joints were um, beveled before welding to achieve full penetration. I have a couple of patch plates welded to the frame um, for extra strength. There are two places where the frame takes the highest um, uh, shear loads on the welds. One is at this 90 degree joint um, and so you'll see that there's a patch plate welded over the mitered joint which is welded so that's to reinforce that joint. And then um, down here at the bottom, there's another patch plate over a miter. You can't see the miter, which is below that joint. Now, the steel tube, the 4x6 tube, continues inside the frame of the um, tractor about 18 inches. And um, on, the, on the bottom, on the bottom here, is a quarter inch steel plate that runs back almost two feet and it's welded its entire length to the to the frame of the of the tractor so this quarter inch plate under here is welded to the frame of the tractor and then the steel this rectangular steel tube which runs inside here back about 18 inches is welded to the steel plate so um, that ensures that the frame is structurally um, attached to the to the drive frame, you know, of, of the tractor. So um, it's a pretty solid uh, connection point. And of course, these panels come off for servicing the hydraulic um, circuits and, and that sort of thing. So I think that just about covers most of the details. Um, I won't start it up right now. I'm going to save that for the next video. I'll start it up. We'll operate the blade, go through the paces, rotate, run the locking pin. Um, there is a telltale here sticking up from the um, locking pin um, housing, and this tells me the location of the locking pin. The locking pin moves up and down about um, an inch and a quarter. So this tells me if the locking pin is out or in, and I can tell that from the, um, from the operating position. I think that's about it. So, all right, guys. I think that's about it. I hope uh, I covered most of the high points of the build here for this uh, motor grader. If you have any questions, post them down below in the comments. I'll try to get to them and answer them as best I can. And uh, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I've got a couple more videos of this tractor coming out. And I'm also working on a video of the tandem dump tractor, which has, uh, again, tandem double, tandem, double, tandem double axles. It has uh, tandem axles and uh, looks like a tractor, except it has a hydraulic dump bed on the back. And I use it a lot around the property for chores, hauling stuff. And um, it makes a good landscaping utility vehicle. I call it a gator, um, but it's a, a 6x4 Cub Cadet, so look for that video coming up in the not-too-distant future. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. This is uh, Frank in his workshop. All right, see you guys later.